So these are the five steps for revolution. It's, you know, as he accurately said in the clip I played for you a minute ago, the CIA developed this. Uh, and it was for revolutions, green and color revolutions. And it's really easy. You have to discredit the press. Now, once you discredit the press, you also have to discredit uh, intelligentsia. You have, to, you have to discredit all of the experts. Well, they've done both of these themselves. Okay? And I don't think that it is... Um, a coincidence that it works out. Everything that the left does, doesn't it always seem to be a win-win for them? Whether it's exposed, whether it works, whether it doesn't, they always seem to win. It always works in their favor. So they've discredited the press. They've discredited the experts. How easy would it be to regain the trust of our doctors and our our uh, scientists, if they would just come out and say, yeah, we really blew it here and we're finding the people responsible for it. We know it was Fauci. W why wouldn't you do that? Because they want experts to continue to be discredited by the average. So that way, when there's chaos on the street, do you trust the police? Do you trust the FBI? Do you trust the medical association? Do you trust the media? Who's coming for you? If there's real trouble, who's coming? Did you see the video of the guy on the street in New York? This He was a regular guy standing up in the streets of New York. The press was asking him questions about, you know, uh, why are you standing up against, you know, the letting people across the border? And he looked at the person, the reporter, and then he looked at the crowd and he said, guys, it's up to us. No one is coming to save our city. No one is coming to save our state or our constitution. No one's coming. The news is not telling you the truth. The politicians are part of it. The politicians are the ones doing it to us. We have to stand up. So that way, if everything is discredited, you feel like you have to stand up and then things get even more out of control because somebody does something stupid or something is set up to make it look like that other side is doing something and they can crack down. Everybody cries out for order. Look at what's happening there in the, in the news today. I was reading a couple of stories. Uh... Chicago area high school provides segregated classes for black and Hispanic students. Now, any time in modern history, we would know that's racist. You can't do that. You're, what are you doing? What is it doing? It is creating hostilities between races. It's creating separate classes, except it's just reversed. What is that going to do? Did you see there was uh, another story, oh, where was this one, maybe New York, where the uh, students, black and Hispanics, are no longer going to be held to that white standard of education. <laughs> now, what does that mean? You're going to lower the standards? Really? That's a white thing? Because I know a lot of dummy white people. What does that do? That just makes you into a slave. If you have poor education and you're not held to a higher standard, what do you think's going to happen to our society? More than uh, 2,500 police officers in New York City have quit this year. New York City uh, is uh, also uh, a place where uh, what was it, 2 billion? I can't find it now. But the amount of money, I think it's $2.4 billion that has been lost this year in theft. In theft. Businesses are closing. They can't handle the amount of theft. What does that make you do? It makes you cry out for somebody to make it stop. Now, this is the way they're trying to make Argentinians, the Argentinian president, look 
like he's crazy and a fascist. But I want you to listen to what he says. I don't necessarily like the way he says it. He uses the S word a lot. Um, But listen to what he's saying about uh, the left in Argentina. You can't give left hearts an inch. Can you define leftist? All collectivists, all kinds of collectivists. But why do you call them shit? Because they are. If you think differently from them, they will kill you. This is the point. You can't give leftists an inch. If you give them an inch, they will use it to destroy you. You can't negotiate with left hearts. You don't negotiate. You don't negotiate with trash because they will end you. If they, the left, have a guy that beats his wife off, if it's one of them, he puts on the green scarf and yells about neoliberalism all the time, and they hide it. If suddenly there's a journalist that molests another journalist, they hide it. When it's one of them, they hide it. They hide all of those aberrations. Now if you are on the other side, they will ruin you, they will kill you, they will throw you everything. They don't care if they ruin your whole life. Why? Only because you don't think like them. And do you know what's the good part in all of this? Because since to error is human, since everyone can be mistaken, they force us to be better. And since we are getting better than them, since we are crushing them in the cultural battle, we are not only superior economically, we are morally superior, we are aesthetically superior, we are better than them at everything, and that triggers them. And since they can't beat us with real arguments, they just use the repressive apparatus of the state with loads of taxpayer money to destroy us. And yet they're still losing. They had to remove the blacklist. They had to remove the blacklist. You understand, they're losing. They're desperate. Leftists are losing the cultural battle. For the first time ever, they are cornered. Those left hearts. Okay. Now, when you watch him, he looks a little nuts. He's got an interesting aesthetic going on there. Yeah, Yeah. he does. Mm -hmm. He does. He's got the Um, crazy hair. uh He's very passionate. Right. But that's a way people use that to dismiss him, obviously, at their own peril. But listen to what he's saying. Mm. Why do we think this is about the Democrats and Republicans? Why are we fighting over stupid parties When this is being fought now in Ireland, it's being fought in several countries in Europe. This is being fought. He was just elected as president of Argentina. This isn't an American problem. This isn't about Trump supporters. This isn't about the Tea Partiers. They want you to believe that it is, but it's not. It's about standing up against an ideology of collectivism. That's what this is about. They believe that there are ranchers and sheep. And if you agree with them, maybe you could be a rancher. Otherwise, get into the pen, your sheep, and you will be slaughtered if the sheep ever figure out, wait a minute, there's more of us than them. You'll be slaughtered. That's what we're arguing about. We're not arguing about tax policy or anything else. You know, this guy is a great example. You hear this from somebody on the right in Europe. It can be very scary because you don't know. Because in um, Europe, left and right is very different. The left is communism. The right is fascism. Both of those are oppressive and death prescriptions. Horrible, horrible systems. Here, the left is totalitarianism of any kind. Theological, uh, leftist, fascistic, any of this stuff. Communism, that's all on the left. In America, the right is anarchy. Government so small that it can't do anything. And the very extreme of that is anarchy. We're just inside, out of reach of anarchy. That's what American conservatives should be fighting for. That's what makes this guy less scary. 
Now, he can change. Maybe he's a fraud. I don't know. But what he's saying he's going to do is dismantle all of the power centers. He's going to dismantle their Federal Reserve, their central bank. He says they're controlling the finances. They're controlling the money. They're controlling everything. And they're debasing and devaluing the money of the average person. Well, that's same here. But if you speak out against the Federal Reserve, you're a crackpot. I'm a fascist because I believe that no secret cabal of bankers and banks should decide what my money is worth, that should decide what they can print and not print, that my children have to pay for. I'm a fascist because I believe that that shouldn't exist. This is, he's right. They are losing. It is going to come right down to the wire. And I think AI is going to play a big role. But if we stay sane, keep our wits on our heads and our Judeo-Christian ethics about us, and we let people see our ethics, nobody wants to hang out with people who are screaming, you know, death to the Jews. At least I hope not. And that's what they're becoming. Shout your abortion, death to the Jews, take and mutilate children, teach children in school that they should be protesters above everything else, and that they can be whatever they want. And it starts with not listening to your parents because you know better than your parents and we're on your side. Who wants that? That's what this is really all about. And I hope he does exactly what he says he's going to do.